Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason with the JW Classic VW, and welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to the garage and the 40 horsepower build. This is episode number, not two, 11! 11! That's right, guys. There's a lot in this series, because there's a lot to cover, and I don't want to have videos that are like five hours long. <laughs> 40 horsepower build engine right there. In the last video, we talked about, uh, what do we do? Hmm, that's right. Distributor drive install, distributor install, and the fuel pump. If you want to check that out, video over here and guys right after this intro we're gonna get right into doing the flywheel seal install and setting crank in play or flywheel in play see you in a second guys right after this intro guys welcome back welcome back so before we can set the end play or, or anything we have to go ahead and get the flywheel installed and torque down to spec and we have to do that without a seal in place without any of the shims in place and for me to be able to do that on this particular <laughs> engine stand setup i have to remove this bottom this bottom uh, bolt here that's holding everything in together because it hits well actually i need to move it out a little ways and then I can put it back on, but I gotta put some, some spacers in here to get there. So I'll be right back in a second, and then we'll put the flywheel on. <laughs> Will two of you guys work? Oh my gosh, there's like barely any room. I don't know if I can get a washer on there. Tighten it down, see if the flywheel will go on here, Neil. All right, before you put your flywheel on, guys, you wanna make sure that you have a good seal inside of here and that you clean off the surface. You don't want any material or any jazz causing a, a misreading when you're checking your end play. And that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. How long is this gonna take, you think? Hopefully not five hours. That doesn't feel right. Ooh, woo -hoo. that's it. It's also like when you torque this bad boy down, you want to put a flywheel lock in place. There's supposed to be a washer on that. I don't know, guys. To look that up. <laughs> yes. Here's our flywheel lock. We just gotta get ourselves a bolt that'll stick through here, th stick through the case and the actual lock itself. And that locks everything into place. So this is the torque multiplier. Take a look at this bad boy. 25 foot-pounds equals 225 foot-pounds, which is pretty close. Pretty close to what the book calls out for. 30 foot-pounds equals 270 foot-pounds. This is also great for doing your rear axle nuts on a swing axle. Yeah, buddy. So I'm just going to use this sucker right here to start torquing her down. Well, I'm not torquing down yet. Just tightening it down right now. So this should look familiar to you guys. <laughs> And I slap that bad boy in there. And here's the deal. You don't need to put a nut on this other side to hold that there. It's going to be fine with just that. As long as you've got a bolt that's a good size, you're not going to have too much play in there jacking with you. 25 it is, guys. 25 foot-pounds of torque. I don't know if that's it or not. I don't think so. Well, that's it. We're there, see? With this bad boy and made it look super easy oh yeah all right guys i've got my gauge in place and some maneuvering to do here and yes don't give me crap about it being busted there it doesn't move so that's all, all i'm worried about let's move the gauge around to zero you guys see that zoom me in zoom me down zero and now i'm gonna move the flywheel out so we can get our our base number give us an idea of how much shimmage we got to add in Right? That's right at 35 thousandths. 35 thousandths. Zero. 35 thousandths. Cool! So we know we gotta add, uh, you know, about 30 thousandths worth of shims, guys. 
All right, guys, now that I've shown you how to do this with the gauge over here, let me show you how this one works right here. Is you take your, your gauge in, you got your bolt, well, there'll be bolt in here holding this in place. You take your little nut in here and you take it in until it, it, it bottoms out. All right, let me bring you over. You can see what I'm talking about. So you've got this little band boy bottomed out and it's in place. And then what you do is you push in the flywheel to back to zero. See, and then you got a space there. You grab your feeler gauges. Oh, you can't see the space. My bad. Shaky, shaky. You take your feeler gauges and you figure out what the space is. Once you figure out what the space is, then you know what you need to add or subtract. Pretty cool little gizmo. You can pick this up from any of the VW places as well. Great way to check your flywheel and play. But if you got one of the fancy doodads, one of these setups here, and we use this for checking, uh, you know, like valve geometry and stuff, then you're already set. You can just use that. But if you want to pick something up like this for doing quick checks, this also works as well. All right, guys, it's that time of the video again to remind you, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to this content if you're enjoying it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, guys. Enable notifications for all future content. And don't forget, check out the website, jwclassicvw.com, where we have cool flag tags and channel stickers. Hmm. Back to the video. <laughs> so that's it, guys. We need 30 thousandths worth of shims, or 31 thousandths worth of shim, somewhere around there. This is a pretty cool little setup, this, this digital caliber eye gauge. It's a great set to have as part of your kit. Check out the description below, guys. I will link this in the Amazon affiliate stuff so you, that you know. If you buy this bad boy, this setup here, you're helping support the channel, and that's pretty awesome. Go ahead and uh, zero her out. We'll zero her out anyway. Hold it down. We're zeroed out. We're looking for 30 thousandths or close to 30 thousandths. So I've got these older shims here which will probably get us there. Let's just go ahead and check those first and just see if we're good to go. We need to have at least three shims anyway. And this is the stack up that used to be in the engine. So I'm assuming that it's pretty darn close. So, but uh, it's always good to check. It's always good to check. Let's, uh, you guys can't see that. Let's go ahead and check this out. This stack right here, it's kind of heavy. Kind of heavy. Yeah, that's uh, sitting at 36 thousandths. So that would be too much. 14 thousandths. We're going to have to get ourselves some shims, guys. 11 thousandths. 11 thousandths. 12 thousandths. Yep, we're gonna have to buy some shims. Ah, crap, city. That's right, guys. So the shims that I have here are not gonna cut the mustard. It's got a little bit too much thickness. We're gonna have to be somewhere around 30 to 32 thousandths to be able to get what I need to get. So we went ahead and placed an order with CIP1. We'll see how long that takes. Normally it's a few days once I place an order, but the good thing is I can go ahead and pull off the flywheel and uh, install the flywheel seal. Yep, get that knocked out and, you know, at least, get, at least get that far. So what's great about the torque multipliers, guys, and removing the flywheel. Yeah, you might put 220, 300. Some people put like 400 foot pounds on these glad nuts because, you know, that's the kind of power they're making. And it comes off just as easy as it goes on using the uh, torque multiplier. So make sure, man, I'm telling you guys, I, I've done this the hard way, you know, removing these suckers with like, <laughs> I don't even want to talk, talk about how dangerous it is when uh, you go to do this with a, I don't know, like a big old torque wrench and a pry bar, or not pry bar, but like a cheater bar. And yeah, things start to get kind of dangerous. And uh, if you have a significant other, say like a girlfriend, wife, or something along those lines, see, see how easy that came off there? I think we put what, 220 on there? Two, 225 foot pounds and I I barely had to do anything with a torque multiplier to get it off of there. <sighs> yeah, this is it. This is it. This is the only way to do it. Let's uh I think it costs like 80 bucks, maybe 100 bucks for this sucker and it's it pays for itself. Yeah, getting this off of here is not too hard to do. You just want to apply even pressure. There's a good chance it's uh it's going to fall out, so you want to have a handle on it. A couple pry bars. And just kind of work it out. 
pay attention to I can already see it coming off. Just pay attention to it because it's going to want to drop. And you work yourself around. Nice even pressure. There she goes. Yep, that's it. So the old flywheel seal, guys. There's something important to look at when it comes to these. These seals back in the day when I was a mechanic in the military, uh, they used to come packed with grease inside of this area. You know, there's a nice little bead of grease that would be inside of here. And that would help whenever the flywheel seal was initially installed to help that thing seat correctly. Now, if you ever put one of these things on here and realize how kind of sticky it feels and it's nice and tight, uh, you want a tight seal. But the problem is, is if you don't have any grease on there to help kind of break this sucker in as it's initially starting, sometimes these engines sit around for a while, then what ends up happening is the flywheel will rip this freaking seal right off of there. Something else to pay attention to is when you're looking at your flywheel surface, this contact surface right here, is it nice and clean? If you have an older flywheel, like, yeah, this has got some surface rust on it. But if you have an older flywheel, you need to clean this surface up and polish it up nice and, and, and feel it. Does it feel rough? Take some like 400 and then go to like a thousand grit sandpaper and just really polish this bad boy up good because that's going to help out with a break in as well. It's not too bad. The surface isn't too bad, but I'm going to take some 600 grit. And a little bit of lube, this Frio, man, it's good for all kinds of stuff. A little bit of lube, and then just, I'm just gonna hit it anyway. I'm gonna go around and clean it up nice, because I want a smooth, smooth action on this. Little rang, clean it off. Oh yeah. That's a lot better. So shiny. Mm. 24 hours later. All right, guys. Well, it is time to put the flywheel seal in. And I went ahead and I stopped by one of my local shops, Bugaholics in Pasadena. Henry over there helped me out with three ten thousandths shims. So we got a 30 thousandths pack here. 30 thousandths. Remember that our gap was 35. So I'm going more towards the 5 thousandths side of that. So about a 5 thousandths end play gap, which is not a bad idea to go a little bit looser when it comes to an older engine or even a high power engine. Go a little looser on the end play. All assembly lubed up. Good. It's definitely a good idea to lube these up because you can burn a washer if you don't get them lubed up nice. On a newer case, you probably don't have to worry about this so much, but uh, like I told you, there's some, there's some little grooves in here where somebody had stuck a screwdriver at one point or something. And... Uh, a little bit of sealer for insurance is not going to end the world. Ooh, well, that's about all the way in. There we go. Yep, you don't want to have any flush. It should be sitting in nice and solid against the inner lip there, which we are. We'll go around a couple wraps. Yeah, the first time I installed one of these was, God, I must have been 15 years old. And uh, I was like, yeah, just flush. I'm just going to take it flush. And that's where I had an issue, where it ripped the damn thing right out of there. And it poured oil right out the back. And I mean, like, it poured oil out the back. Okay. I'm going to clean this up a little bit too, but we're just packing this in, right in this lip in, in here. I tell you what, this that is going to save the day when it comes to your rear main seating properly, when it comes against the surface of your flywheel. And you can get a little grease inside of there, and it's not going to hurt anything. Clean off the extra. The extra mess. You don't need any of this on the outside here. Just need it on the inside lip there. All right, let's put the flywheel on, guys. This is what kind of want to talk about this first. Uh, on your early flywheels, there is no seal on the inside here. And what normally people do is on the early engines, they put that little washer in there. You know that little metal washer? Let me, let me find one real quick and show you. These little stupid washers right here. 
I'm not a fan of them, man. Uh, you torque things down, and sometimes these, I don't know if it's just what they're made out of, your flywheel can come loose, and so I have like a no thank you. And they actually, they make these things in an $8 one too. And the paper gasket, no, not, not a fan. If you want to put some sealer material on your flywheel, go ahead and take a little bit of uh, some gasket cinch and just put a thin layer on there on those early flywheels and you'll be fine. We're gonna pop her, pop her in a little bit. Get our seat on those dowels good. It's upside down, I think. Mm -hmm. oh, which way we gotta go? A little bit that way. There we go. Let's go ahead and put it in our glad nut. And uh, you can see I've got the washer on here now. And uh, it's good to go with a new Glad nut if you got an old one, because these things can wear out too. And uh, your washer. A little bit of blue Loctite. You can, don't go crazy. Don't go gonzo with the Loctite. I'll put a little bit here and a little bit there. That's good enough. That's just a little extra security. Alrighty. Nope. Almost ready to put the torque wrench on here. The book calls out for 217 foot pounds, and we're just gonna go ahead and take it to the, was it 225 on this? Yeah, the 225 foot pounds. So 25 foot pounds is 225 foot pounds. Well, that's it. 25 foot pounds of torque, guys. Yeah. One the final things you want to do is just make sure you can move your flywheel still. Because for whatever reason, you got something wrong. And you weren't able to move your flywheel. Then uh, that'd be a bad deal <laughs> whenever you try to do anything else. <laughs> well, guys, that's going to do it for today. That's going to do it for this episode. We got that flywheel installed. Got the new seal installed and play. Good to go. We've got a lot more coming very soon. Next episode, probably going to be Rocker Arms, doing Rocker Arm Geometry. Well, not so much geometry, but more side play geometry, making sure that everything is lined up because we're doing that solid shaft switch out. Get rid of those wavy washers, guys. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the new subscribers. Hope you enjoy enjoying the series. If you are, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little thing off to the side, boys. See you next time. This is Jason with JD Classic VW, and I'm out. Did you think I forgot about the drawing? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go upstairs real quick, guys, and do the drawing for the calendar and the chamois and a bunch of other cool stuff. Who do you think won? Hmm, let's find out. See you in a second. Okay, guys, let's knock out this drawing real quick. We'll go ahead and drop the link right in here. Oh, this is the link to the video. Okay, yes. We're going to go ahead and put 2023. I know I said calendar 2023, but this should work. Start, start. Right here. Who's going to get it? Who's going to get it? There we go. Chris Gardner. Hey, buddy. You need to do me a favor and shoot me over your address, but do that via the email at jwclassicbw at yahoo.com. So see you in the next video, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Talk to you later. This is Jason. Bye-bye.